Hi, my name is Dr. Rudra Mohan and through the Oral Health Channel, today we are going to be talking about laser assisted fibrotomy in oral submucous fibrosis. Let's start. So today's episode is very interesting and it comes with a warning. Now, uh, we have had cases of oral submucous fibrosis where we have done fibrotomies with scalpels also and nowadays a new minimally invasive option is the laser. Now the diode laser usually is used and you have to understand that there are some sorts of prerequisites that come with it uh, in terms of your, your patient profile. That means that you need to be an OSMF patient who is suffering from a group 2 or a you know moderate OSMF. For very severe cases we obviously go for buccal fat pad operations or any sort of nasal label fap, uh, flap operations. Now you have to really understand that uh, the laser is uh, minimally invasive, its depth of penetration is you know very less into the tissues. Uh, it is um, relatively painless compared to the scalpel and the scar formation is minimal and uh, when it comes to the patient profile the biggest prerequisite for the patient is compliance. You cannot uh, you know you have to quit the habit, you cannot miss exercises for even one day and in the first uh, you know first few post-operative days you have to do the exercises about six to seven times a day um, the procedure is very simple after evaluating your case that seeing what the severity is we will anesthetize your buccal mucosa or the cheek mucosa and after that we will take the diode laser with the preset settings and we will give an incision from the retromolar uh, you know the area to the angle of the mouth or to the first premolar and that line will go around the incision line will go around the uh, occlusal plane that means where your teeth meet. Now this is a relatively bloodless procedure compared to the scalpel because of the fact that the laser has a coagulative effect. Now once you continue this incision it becomes a y-shaped inverted y-shaped incision that's very important for opening up the mucosa. Once that incision is completed we open up the mucosa with the help of a if not a, you know a heister's mouth gag or a mouth opening device and then after that if required we put a collagen sheath in the exposed wound so that the healing is facilitated at the same time the separated fibers do not oppose to, towards each other and cause relapse now we give you antibiotics analgesics physiotherapy exercises nutrition supplements and give you the instructions for the post-operative healing the first few days you will have pain and discomfort and burning sensation and your mouth might opening might go slightly lower than before that's not something to be worried about that's completely uh, you know uh, intermediate or interim and it's temporary provided you do the exercises that we tell you to do post operatively for the next six months and especially for the first few weeks you're supposed to do the exercises almost six to seven times a day whenever you get time and keep it as a habit that means you cannot miss any day of exercise because the first three months are very crucial when it comes to healing and there have been cases there have been cases where we have 18 mm of mouth opening which has gone up to 33 mm and a slight relapse is expected but it comes down to 31 mm which is pretty good decent results overall compared to the flap surgeries or the you know the buccal fat pad surgeries and compared to the uh, you know the conventional scalpel fibrotomy the laser fibrotomy is quite bloodless the scar formation is definitely there but it is definitely much lesser than that of the uh, one caused by the conventional fibrotomy by the help of a scalpel and the main thing that lies with you the buck stops with you at all times you have to quit the habit and you have to have to have to have to have to make sure that you're doing the physiotherapy exercises otherwise all of our efforts will go in vain and we make sure that we take it in writing from, from you that there, if there is any sort of non-compliance then we are not responsible for any relapse. So this was today's episode. Please like, share, subscribe and do press the bell icon button for important updates. If you want to get in touch with me, here are my social media handles. Kindly refrain from calling me directly as I might be busy with patients. Just drop me a message uh, on WhatsApp with your name, your location and the common oral health problem that's causing you discomfort and pain. And I'll get back to you shortly. If you have any queries, doubts, apprehensions or insights, please feel free to put them in the YouTube comment section. So that's it for today. Thank you.